Welcome back everybody, it's Paul Magov here, and I need to adjust this volume a bit. Okay, that's better. So welcome back. Wanted to come back and say, I've got good news everyone! Because I just realized that I can still access all the stuff I had gotten previously back when I was in school for Adobe Premiere CS6. And for some reason, when I switched over to the Creative Cloud, I thought that voided that for some reason, or something. Or something stupid like that. I don't know how I came to that conclusion when that actually wasn't the case. But now I know I can just use a CS6 for Adobe Premiere Pro, so I don't have to use Adobe Premiere Elements and all of that, so I can have my cake and eat it too. Which is excellent. And I'll still have Adobe Premiere Elements as a backup if something were to happen in the long term, but I feel a lot better now, a lot more confident in my post-production stuff now that I've got that all sorted out. So first things first, we're going to take a look at this level for the Panama Canal. And we've got some basic objectives right here. And before we start, we need to go and lay out some tracks. That's the first bit, but we need to do a bit more. Specifically, this convoluted mess up and over this hillside to get to this coal mine here. And it took a lot of trial and error to be able to figure that out even though it probably shouldn't have. And that's one of the things that's really weird about this level. There's a lot of... There's a lot of stuff that... serves as an obstacle that I need to overcome. And it's not very intuitive how I'm supposed to do that. At least not completely. And I think I should probably send this train over to the smelter. Yeah, I think that's gonna be the next right step. And one of the things about this level is that we have to make sure that we get all the tracks taken care of in this giant ditch over here because that's gonna become the canal soon and the water's gonna flood in eventually, so we need to be prepared for that. And part of those preparations means we need to be really fast. Blocks are fast! This, that, and the other. And once that's all sorted out, uh, we should be good to go. One thing, though, that I feel is a bit challenging is actually trying to build a tunnel over here, which I will eventually need to do at some point. But it's like 73,000 bucks, so I'm gonna have to sit and wait on it. But once that's all sorted out, the only thing we'll need to be concerned about is managing our time and uh, spatial management. So any has anything else new happened? Well, I got to go to a museum on the weekend whose name I don't recall. On the one hand, it felt like it was a lot bigger on the inside than initial assessments would have suggested, but after everything was said and done, it just kind of wrapped itself up on its own very quickly. And I thought that was kind of strange. 
Like, there was more to it on the inside than I thought there would be, according to what I saw on the outside, but... That and other considerations made me realize that there wasn't as much as I thought there could have been in the end, because we basically went through the entire museum all in one day. Hey, what do you know? I can actually lay this out better. I want to pause while I go and see what else I need to do. Because I know there must be something else that needs to be taken care of. I just can't put my finger on it. Which is obviously what happens when I'm multitasking. But yeah, we've got the next locks uh, built up, and this part's going to be completely submerged. So we need to make sure that we're completely prepared for when that time comes, because this section's going to get all washed away. If we're not careful. I think I might be able to upgrade some locomotives. I think that will be useful in some respect. The other thing I noticed was that I was looking at some of my older videos because I felt like I should do something to kind of improve them in some respect. Because back in the day, you could basically say whatever you wanted on YouTube and nobody would yell at you about it or complain, or demonetize you, or that sort of thing. And although I haven't been known for getting demonetized, at least historically, I did find that my video for Railway Valley had been demonetized, and I had completely been oblivious to this up until this point in time. And I'm not entirely sure... Or at least I wasn't entirely sure at the beginning what I had said or done that seemed so offensive. And then I looked back at it and it was like, yeah, I can see what they were talking about. But I feel like there were so many other things that were in other videos that would have been considered more offensive. But I wanted to go back, do a retcon, and make sure that... It's scrubbed nice and clean so that it's more suitable for a general audience because times have changed and I feel that I should adjust as well. And I feel one of the ways I should be able to do that is to take some of the videos I've got, edit the audio in them through uh, the editing features available on YouTube's web website and that sort of thing, and then, just be, and then just be done with it, but apparently that's not how it works. Because you can replace all the audio from an uploaded video, but you can't, like, take snippets out. And I could do something like cut out some segments, where I say a certain word that I don't feel would be appreciated, and then take care of it from there. But that would just cause unnecessary jump cuts. And I'd rather not do that either. I really wish that there was a feature on YouTube that lets you replace the audio with whatever you wanted to upload. But I can already tell how that could be a bit of a problem. Because someone can just modify something to make it completely out of context. And try to create some sort of a false narrative that isn't actually real for their own political agendas or to create YouTube drama, but for doing little things like removing certain expletives, I feel like that would be a great improvement because you can already blur out people's faces post-upload, as far as I can tell. And that has been useful, retroactively speaking, for some people who've posted content online. 
especially for people who have changed their minds about whether they want it to be recorded on something or not. And I could imagine that being able to distort or obscure audio would be a very useful feature for protecting people's anonymity and privacy, like the blurring out of certain portions of videos with sensitive information. Because the last I checked, people can still recognize... Oh. People can still recognize who's talking in a video purely based on of what it sounds like. And I think we nearly missed that. But I think we have enough cash laying around to actually build this tunnel now. So now I don't have to worry about that. But I don't have enough cash for that. Oh well. I think that's actually going to be a huge issue now that I think about it. Yeah, I was trying to practice this level and I did not think this through. Okay, just put this right here. That's better. But now I still don't have enough cash. I'm barely just scraping by. And there should be something else that I should be occupying my time with. And we can get rid of these tracks. Get some extra cash from that. That sounds better. Nope, 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 nope. I didn't want to send this kind of locomotive out. Go back. Okay. What should our next objective be? We need to get some people over to the uh, chemical plant. I think I've got enough cash to do this. Which means I'll have enough cash to send one last train over to the smelter to get some of that sorted out. Because I almost have enough for what I need to get done. Something else doesn't seem right. Yeah, I just can't put my finger on it. Uh, some of my contents to make it more... To make it more appealing. Ooh, I was supposed to send coal over there. I should have known. Yeah, I really should have known. Wait, but now I can do this. But now I don't have enough cash for that. Okay. Oh well, I can just send some more trains over to this facility to extract some fossil fuels. In the meantime, it up. There we go.
Now I think I've got everything in order. Or at least I should. Yeah, that sounds much better. But of course I had to just send another train that only carries four cars instead. As is as is a force of habit to make that kind of mistake. And there we go, we've got the Panama Canal finished. And we didn't have to lift a finger. But yeah, we should be able to send some extra coal to the smelter to get that one last copper ingot. And I forgot to flip the switches. I can't imagine why. But yeah, we should be able to get some polymers that we'll need to finish the level. And were there any other personal updates on my mind? Because I can't immediately think of any, but I know it'll come to me. Because, like I said earlier, because I was just kind of harping on that point, I feel like being able to edit audio in videos I've already published would make my life easier in some respects. But for now, I think I'm just going to have to just deal with it. I might just have to re-upload the video entirely in a full-blown uh, retcon, as some people call it. Where you just take something that you've published and then you just republish it with some modifications. I'm already familiar with that in some respects, but I do admit, though, that if I was able to just make it a lot easier on myself, uh, by some other means, and if it were available, I would more than uh, certainly do that. I just didn't want to lose all the statistics I had on stuff I already uploaded, because I hardly get any statistics at all these days. But I guess beggars can't be choosers. But I feel like it kind of just erases a bit of my history on this channel on YouTube, in some respects. To be able to- I want to be able to see how much I've improved and let other people see that as well when it comes to stuff like video production and overall quality. Not that I would be the shining example of that. And not that I would actually want to actually look back at all the stuff that I've done and post it online because some of it's really awkward and it's kind of embarrassing. At least to me it is. But that's just one way of looking at it. I'm pretty sure there are others. And we're gonna need some extra coal. And we're gonna need it fast. 
Because the power station's down. Yeah. But once we get the power station back up and running, we should be... We should be... We should be good, yeah. Pretty sure there must be something else I'll be able to bring up in a moment. Uh, when it comes to me, I think the first thing that's coming to mind, though, specifically, is the fact that. Oh, right, I've already mentioned in the past that I wanted to change up the material that I post online to be more eloquent and all that. And professional and serious. But I think we're on the last stretch. We should be able to wrap up this level any moment now. Oh, nope, nope. Forgot to flip something. And that's certainly gonna slow things down a bit. But done and. Oh. What happened? Did I. I didn't make all the time objectives. Oh, yeah, that and I. No, wait, I take that back. I missed one of the objectives for time and didn't make enough money. That's what happened. Okay. Well, I, I can understand that. But let's move on to uh, the San Francisco Bay where we'll go and try to make the Golden Gate Bridge. The first thing we'll need to do is go hook up the sand quarry to this town over here. Which would probably be San Francisco proper. We got the North Bay up here. And we should be able to scoot along by. That's better. Speaking of which, I think I was just around in this general area. That's where I went to uh, the museum. I can't remember its name. I'll be able to post some text after I recorded this saying specifically where I went. But yeah, for some reason my memory is failing me. But it was in this general area. And for some reason I thought that this narrow straight wouldn't have actually been there. But now that I look back to it, it actually kind of does look like that. Being uh, able to actually kind of experience it there firsthand because there was... This, because the museum was so close to the opening of the bay. It was really kind of weird. Like, to put in perspective, if this is all of San Francisco, the museum's like in this corner over here, and I think on the other side, somewhere around here, is supposed to be the Walt Disney Family Museum, which was the other place that I could have gone to after everything was said and done. So I'd be able to see the same people again that I went to the museum with, but also do it with the uh, 
Disney Family Museum, which apparently is like, way bigger than the art museum we went to. Like, several orders of magnitude bigger. I think I've made a mistake. But it was just a feeling. I think it had to do with the fact that I hadn't built a bridge over right here like I should have to get all the coal and iron ore over to the smelter. But I've got to occupy my time with actually micromanaging some other stuff. But I think everything's going well so far. I'll just be able to add some more locomotives at some points to speed things up and upgrade them as well. But I still don't have- oh, I do have enough cash for this. Excellent. So all I gotta do is just build it out to- oh shoot. Oh, now it's working. Now we're cooking with gas. Much better. Then we'll be able to get the coal to the smelter, the iron ore to the smelter, and then we should be good to go. Still not sure why the steel billets are large cylinders. At least in the in-game assets. Usually when I see steel being smelted and forged into... into a manufactured product, I usually think of it as being a large rectangular billet that gets machined down to a specific size. Even in old stock footage I see from the 19th century, I mean the 20th century. We'll be able to meet our objective of the first eight steel billets, and then we'll be able to get some extra equipment and materials over to the bridge. We will need some extra glass, though. And we will also need to build this out over here. Trying to avoid all the obstacles in the way as best as we can because we don't want to... What's the word I'm looking for? Destroy objects with a total combined worth of 10 grand. Yeah, so if we can avoid that, that would be great. I do have to say, though, that getting the building materials is probably the most difficult portion of this level, because after that it's just kind of like coasting down a hillside in terms of its difficulty. 
And I'm beginning to suspect this level's gonna be a lot- I mean, this episode's gonna be much longer than previous ones. At least from the time code I've got on my screen capture software. Up and over, up and over, up and over, there we go. And then we'll be able to build this out, which will be handy as well. Should be able to upgrade this locomotive. And then dispatch some more. But we're gonna need way more cash. If we're gonna get anything done. And we'll also need some rolled steel and all that. This, that, and the other. I'm trying to think if there was something else that I was thinking about. I always keep doing that. But I think we should be able to build this bridge here and start getting the tracks out over here. And I sent the coal train in the wrong direction. One of the weird things, though, about California's geology, or rather the geology of the West Coast, is that coal is not very common. At least in my experience. Because you wouldn't find a lot of coal-based technologies on the West Coast like you would on the East Coast, at least historically. And that's just not because of recent trends and the transition towards renewables. It's more to do with the actual topography of the landscape and what the composition of the ground is because even some of the, if my memory is correct, even the Southern Pacific wouldn't rely on coal to actually fuel its steam-powered locomotives. We would rely on crude oil and that sort of thing. Because there was an abundant supply of that along the coast of California and that sort of thing. That's why there were so many Vanderbilt tenders. Well, one of the reasons why. The other reason was purely... I don't know what I'm doing right now, my brain's turning off. Again. It's 
really hoping that wouldn't have happened. But we've got the last steel billets we'll need to finish the level. And once we get the coal station fired up, we'll be able to pump some juice over to the rolling mill here. Like that. And from there, we should be able to send out rolled steel to where it needs to be. But we're going to need some more people over at the utility station. Something isn't quite right. They should have five steel pillars being churned out over here, and there should be five over here, but instead I have four. Oh, that's because I already built some of the materials that I had in mind. Never mind. And I should be able to build some tracks up and over like this to get some of that building equipment where it's supposed to be. But now I have a traffic conflict. Which was something I was trying to avoid. But yeah, I think this is going to be the last leg of the level. Just gotta make sure I have enough electricity to get the job done, and then we can just cut off the power station and be done with that. So we got our last two bits of building materials. Now we just need the steel plates. And we're done. And we got all five stars, which I didn't think we'd actually be able to do. Considering some of the practice I did yesterday to make sure that I was able to get this entire episode streamlined. But yeah. That's going to be it for this episode. Next time we're going to take a look at Miklong and the Wardencliffe levels, which have their own variety of difficulties and challenges. So thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next video. And until then, take care, stay awesome, stay true to yourself, and remember to never give up. Bye, everybody.